praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is in his holy temple. And let all the earth keep silent. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For, my, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name, and make known his deeds among the people. Eternal God, once again, Father, you have blessed us with this privilege to be able, God, to see another day. We realize, oh God, that this is the day that you have made, and we want to rejoice and be glad. And Father, we recognize, O oh Lord, that we are nothing without you, that the very breath that we breathe comes from you. Who we are is because of you. And what we have, God, we give back to you this morning. So now, God, we invoke your presence in this place. Not only in this place, but God, we know that your omnipresence everywhere, God, make yourself known this morning. I pray now, God, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to come and consume us both mind, body, and souls, that as we sit at our tent doors, God, with great anticipation, that we will hear a word from you. We ask you right now, God, that you would have your way, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I see you, brother. Ain't he good? He can and he will. Amen. Dearly beloved, we greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, what a privilege and what an opportunity for us to be standing in his holy presence on this morning. There were some of us who lie down on last night, not us, that weren't able to get up. But here we are, alive and well. Won't he do it? He can and he will. Amen, amen. Coming with you with a few announcements this morning. Uh, our daily bread are in. If you desire to have a daily bread, you can see uh, Sister Brenda Weaver in our home. She will give you a daily bread uh, when you come down on Wednesdays to uh, give your tithes and offering. Rose Simonton will be here on Wednesdays from 11 to 12, 3, 12.30 uh, for those who want to drop off their tithes and offering. And if you desire to have your daily bread at that time, you can see Trustee Brenda Weaver in her home, and she will be more than gladly to give you a daily bread. Also, in the near future, uh, we will be transitioning over from my personal page to a new St. John Missionary Baptist Church Facebook page. We are working on some things. Uh, this pandemic has really stretched us and has really caused us to begin to move in a different direction and do stuff virtually. So we're working on some things to get that in place and some other virtual programs and, and equipment that we have installed here at the church. Uh, we thank God for Bill Pajeski, who has been diligently and committed to uh, exploring these new avenues for us. So we're looking to do some great things in the upcoming months virtually. So we pray that you will be patient with us and more information will follow. And I want to wish all those who had birthdays and anniversaries in the book month of January, happy anniversary and happy birthday. I did forget to announce it at the first of the month, but I do want to announce it today that we did not forget you in our hearts, maybe in our mind, but we want to acknowledge those who were celebrating birthdays and anniversaries on the, in the month of January. We are proud of one of our very own, Brother Elijah Williams. Brother Elijah Williams played in the Tiki Bowl on Thursdays. I know that Brother Elijah Williams did an awesome job down there, even though I wasn't able to get on to see him. But I do believe that you'll be able to go on YouTube at a later date and see him play. We are so proud of this young man and what he brings with the joy that he has, the passion that he has for football. Not only does he have passion for football, he is doing all that he can to make sure that his educational level is up to par. And I hope you don't let me down, my brother, but I know that God has great things for you. Let us continue to pray for him and pray with him as he embarks on a new journey in life. I do believe that he's going to be graduating this year. He's going to be, he's a senior. So we're looking forward to him to do higher education, to get, to matriculate into higher education that he will actually be educated in the time that we're living in. Young people, you need to be educated. You need to have a higher education. We also want to congratulate one of our very own as well, Kwani Koklesia. She was married on the 29th of December. My wife and I, First Lady and I, were going to be there virtually, but somehow or another, we forgot. And we did talk with her. She's happy. We thank God for those young people that are willing to do things right by the way God wants them to do. And she stepped out on faith. Wonderful husband. Don't know him personally, but just seeing him and looking at him, I do believe that he is a good man. I'm claiming that. Uh, but we want to congratulate Kwani Koplesia. Don't know what her last name is now. I didn't write that down, but I will get that to you on next week on her marriage. Amen. We want to also continue to pray for all those who are sick and shut in, all those within the family and outside of our family that has been affected with this coronavirus. We want to make sure that we continue to lift them up in prayer. With that being said, our prayer meetings are continuing going, are going on on Thursdays at 6 p.m. 
we ask that you would come online with us, that we will be able to experience prayer together. That number is 623-600-3756. The code is 213067. We really need to pray together, church. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for our community. We need to pray for our state. And we sure need to pray for our country. Amen. We also want to be mindful of one of our own also that we have come in partnership here with as soon as this coronavirus is, uh, is behind us. Brian Jenkins, he is in Guyana. Uh, he's asking for us to pray for him as he has been quarantined over in Guyana. It's in a different country, but we know that the same God that we serve here in America is over in Guyana. So we pray for this brother. I want to read you a letter that has been put out by the president of the National Baptist State Convention, Jerry Young. And it reads as follows. In 1814, during the War of 1812, Great Britain sent troops to burn several buildings in our national capital, including the Capitol building and the White House. The events of January 6, 2020, parallel the apparent mindset of the British government. Both regions were an attempt to put our democracy at bay. However, the most humiliating tragic difference between the two events is that the hideous act of January 6 was committed against America by American citizens. This mob, through their treasonous acts, intended to disrupt the political process. The fact that this act of terrorism was committed by American citizens is inconceivable. But what is even more deplorable is that the insurrection was incited by our own president of the United States, his attorney, and his enablers. The eternal fighting, fear-mongering, threats against America, outright and deliberate lies, and the insidious hate, of, hate that have festered for the past four years have jeopardized the moral conscience of our country. To our dismay, some leaders in Congress are guilty of helping and enabling the president and thereby gave impudence to events that occurred. Certain factions of, of our country have denied how horrified, how horrific things are. And in fact, they have fanned the flames with their own racist rhetoric and dog whistle tactics. The church must abhor the kind of behavior and call it what it is, unethical, immoral, unchristian. How the Capitol Police addressed this insurrection by President Trump supporters, in contrast to the stark differences we witnessed in the, their overzealous display of force and free preparedness during the peaceful protest of Black Lives Matter supporters, clearly articulates that we have always known to be true in this country. It is a painful reminder of how dangerous and split bias is and can be within our country. The events of January 16th were tremendous, was a tremendous failure of our leadership. Through the wonders of technology, through the wonders of technology, we and in fact the world witnessed the desecration of our nation's capital and an assault on our democracy, democracy and our republic. The fabric of our democracy and the moral fate of our country was threatened. We must place the interests of the party. We must replace the interests of the party with the interests of our country. We must commit ourselves not to choose preferences over principles. We must not choose parties over principles. And ultimately, we must not choose a person over principles. We, as Americans, pledge allegiance to the Constitution. The Capitol building has now been uh, secured, but our democracy will hang in the balance during these next few days while we wait the inauguration of our new president and vice president. We as a country, and most importantly as Christians, cannot and must not remain passive or silent any longer. What happened is not, our, is not only horrible for our country, but it is horrible. It is, horrible. it is a horrible Christian witness. We, the body of Christ, must be vocal and steadfast in combating and condemning hatred, bigotry, and injustice on all levels. The church, universal, 
and the National Baptist State Convention, USA, Incorporated, in particular, must continue to fight for the souls of our country. As Christians, we must continue to pray for our people and our nation. The black church has always been a pillar for our communities and is an effort to lead to a truer form of democracy. Our convention must remain steadfast and true with our prayers, action, and with God as our guide. Better days are coming. President of the National Faith Baptist Convention, President Young, his perspective. May God bless you, and may heaven continue to smile down upon you.
sometimes you just got to visualize what it's going to be like. Not only when we get back into the church, but when we meet in heaven. I'm going all the way. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, uh, would you turn with me to the book of Acts? The book of Acts, chapter 27. We will be reading, starting our reading from verses number 20 down through verse 25. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verses 20 and 25, through 25. And I'll be reading from the NIV this morning. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, 27, starting at verse 20, you will find these words recorded there. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. And after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God, the angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Verse number 25. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, it's once again, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that we have come now, God, and we have bowed before you. Do realize, O oh God, that this is your word. And your word is precious. Your word is powerful. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And now, God, I ask that you would move flesh and blood out of the way as I surrender my mind and my body over to you. You increase as I decrease. Speak to me and speak through me. Search me and know my heart, and try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and then lead me in your way everlasting. And we thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our text today deals with a difficult time in the life of Paul. He is on a journey, headed towards Rome to stand trial before his accusers in the court, in the court of law. <clears throat> Sensing in his spirit that it would be dangerous to sail. Paul tried to persuade those on board with him to delay the trip until a more suitable time. Refusing to pay attention to his warning, the ship sailed anyhow and soon was caught up in the midst of a ferocious storm, threatening the lives of all on aboard the ship. My brothers and sisters, while we may not be on a ship, 
headed to Rome to stand trial. But we are all on a journey through the sea of life. Can I get a witness? And at times the sea is calm. And we, while we're on our journey, enjoy the journey. Life is good. And then there are other times when the storm clouds appear. Winds begin to blow. The waves begin to get rough. And we are forced to sail in a storm. We need the faith of Paul. The faith that Paul possessed when those difficult seasons of our life come. While it is not easy, but we as believers are promised safe passage to the other side. As long as we maintain our faith in the Lord, he will help us on the journey. My brothers and sisters, I came this morning to encourage you. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to reason with you from this thought on this morning. Have faith. Believe God. Have faith. Believe God. The storm Paul and the others were facing was not just a passing windstorm. It was just not a gusty wind that we normally experience through storms. This was a strong storm. A furious, a ferocious, dangerous storm. In verse 20, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. In the text, we see that they had lost their sense of direction. Verse 20, verse 28 says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued to raise. You see, you see, in those days, the ships did not have navigational systems to navigate them and direct them on the stormy seas. They depended on the sun and the stars to guide them on their journey. But for many days, the storm had raged and they couldn't see the sun they could not see the stars for direction. They were in the midst of a great storm and had no idea where they were going and how they were going to get there and where they were headed. They had lost their sense of direction. Oh yes, while in the midst of adversity and storms, it, 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 it's easy for even the strongest Christian to lose their sense of direction in the journey. You don't have to say amen, but I know that in the midst of trouble and storm when they rage in life, sometimes our flesh wants to take over and guide us to a place where God does not want us to go. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, oh yes, we must keep our eyes on the sun, not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. Can I get a witness? We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And if we are to maintain our proper direction, we need God's GPS system. When the storm clouds cover our path and we lose focus and we are in danger of getting off course, uh, and when that happens, we become discouraged. Can I get a witness? Even in the text, they were discouraged. I'm still in the text. We finally gave up all hope, the text says, of being saved. Oh, there are times in our life when, when things seem like they're getting out of whack. And even in this juncture of life and all the havoc and all the craziness that surrounds us, some people, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, might want to go in the town and give up hope. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know this morning that you've got to have faith and you've got to believe God. Yes, you've got to believe God. Luke is along with Paul in this journey. He has recorded the book of Acts for us. In the midst of this furious storm, Luke admits that all hope for survival seems gone. Oh, I don't know about you, brother, but sometimes it looks hard when all things are going on in your life, when hell is raging all around you, when you don't see a way out of nowhere, you begin to think about if there is no way that I can side, but I stop by 
here to let you know today, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We just don't survive. We live because it's through him and we have our being. It's because of God of who we are. And God promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. My brothers and sisters, you've got to have faith and believe God. They were beginning to just fall into defeat, feeling that they were all going to die at sea. And that is, exactly, that is exactly the frame of mind here today that the enemy wants every believer to have. He wants to divert our focus from the Lord to the storms that we face. And, and when we do that, we become discouraged and depressed. He wants us to believe we will never survive the difficulties we face. And there is no use to press on. He wants us to abandon our faith and stop serving the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, no doubt we all face similar situations and have been tempted to abandon the faith, but we must resist the devil. James reminds us that if we resist the devil, he will flee. Oh, yes, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Can I get a witness? Look into the Lord by faith and continue on the journey no matter how difficult it may be. Can I get a witness? The second thing we see in the text is the fervency of prayer. Verse 21. And they had gone a long time without food. Paul stood up before them and said, Man, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. This verse reveals the fervency of Paul in prayer. While everyone else had given up hope, Paul remained resilient in prayer and hope in his God. To fully appreciate the dedication of Paul, we must understand the adverse conditions they were facing. The storm was so intense they had no control over the ship. The captain made a decision to let the ship go wherever it wanted. Their path was literally being dictated by the storm. Well, my brothers and sisters, sometimes the storm that might pushes us to and fro, believing that where we go, we're going to find some hope. And as the storm continued to rage, they were forced to begin to throw everything overboard in an effort to keep the ship afloat. Oh, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. There can be no doubt that the ship and those who sailed on the ship were in perilous situations. Surely, my brothers and sisters, all of us, hallelujah, if we survived the storm of 2020, have faced situations resembling to the dire situation that Paul and his sailors were in. We may not have been on a ship in the midst of the sea, but we face desperate situations that generally dictate to us if we allow our course in life. Are you praying with me? It seems as if our lives were aspiring out of control. I know I'm talking to somebody. And we simply tried to hang on and survive the storm. But maybe you tried to free yourself. And yet the storm was unrelenting. You felt as if you were trying everything that you could. And yet that appeared that there'd be no end of the storm. The wind keeps blowing and the thunder keeps lightning and it's flashing. And all the hell keeps raging. I stopped by here this morning to encourage you. Have faith and believe in God. Hallelujah. Have faith, my brothers and sisters. Believe in God. Don't worry about all this stuff that's going on in the world today. Don't worry about all this rhetoric that's being spewed out on the airway. Don't worry about who's in control. All you need to know that God holds the world in his hands. All you need to know, you've got to have faith and you've got to believe God. Because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Ha, but I thank God. Jesus said, but I came to give you life. And to give it to you more abundantly. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you've got to be committed. You've got to be committed. Paul was, 
In verse 21, the devil is a liar. Paul was committed. Hallelujah. Verse 21. If they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Man, you should have taken my advice not to say up and creep. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. Listen, listen, listen. While the storm raged, Paul was praying. He was seeking the Lord. Everyone else abandoned hope. But Paul didn't. He committed himself to fervent prayer and fasting in the midst of the storm. The Bible says the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. We must, my brothers and sisters, have faith and commit ourselves to prayer and believe God. Because when you believe that God's going to do it, God is going to do it. You just can't pray and have no faith. If God's going to do it, you've got to believe it. That's why you've got to have faith. They said after they had all, after they had gone a long time, oh yes, a long time without food. Here we see Paul's commitment when everybody's commitment, when everybody else has given up all hope, they begin to throw things overboard. Paul committed himself to prayer, and, and after they had gone a long time without food, Paul used this time to fast. Uh, hallelujah. Paul was seeking the Lord on the behalf of himself and all those who traveled with him. Well, my brothers and sisters, I must admit, I must admit, this is easy preaching, but hard to practice. Oh, somebody don't want to hear this morning. I'm not going to sit here and fake it till I make it. I want you to know it's easy preaching it, and it's easy saying it, but it's hard to practice. When all hell is breaking all around you, when you leave you a loved one, when they tell you we got the firm on you, when you got all the man high all around you, it's easy to talk about it, but you've got to have faith and believe God. No matter what, you've got to trust Him. Hallelujah. Paul, Paul fasted and he, and he prayed and, and he began to trust God. And prayer is often viewed for many of us as the last resort. But it should always be considered our first line of defense. My brothers and sisters, we must commit ourselves to pray. Every week I, I put a call out to the congregants here at St. John's to get on the prayer line. And, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad. If you do, so be it. But we only get four or five people on the prayer line. We got to be committed to prayer. The Bible reminds us all the wickedness is going on around us. Let us know that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against wickedness. We're dealing with demons. And dearly beloved, I thank God for Pastor R.J. Manning, or Pastor Bernie H. Manning, Dr. Manning used to always say, you can't counsel the demon. You can talk to a demon all you want. But the Bible reminds us that these come, hallelujah, come out by fasting and praying. If you have faith, if you believe God, you got to line up with the will of God. The Bible said that the church must always pray, lifting up holy hands. Man must pray in season and out of season. Can I get a witness? Have faith and believe God. If you want to see God move mountains, begin to pray. Begin to pray not only separately, but collectively and see what happens. You know what happened on the day of Pentecost. They was all on one accord and the Holy Ghost fell down on them. Hallelujah. My goodness, we need to understand that the times that we're living in, God is looking for the church to let their light shine. And prayer should be our first line of defense. We need to be committed to our prayer life, regardless of the situation, regardless of what's going on. During storms like these, hallelujah, during storms like the storms that we're facing today in our country. In storms like these, we don't need a casual hurry up prayer. We need to labor in prayer. Because a casual prayer is not suffice. These are times when we must commit ourselves 
to a long prayer, not when you get back into the church and we ask you to pray for the offering and you pray for everything else. These are times that what you do in secret, God will reward you open. Can I get a witness? We got to have faith and believe God. And this brings me to my third point. The faithfulness of God. You see, Paul knew that the Lord was faithful. Is there anybody on the airwaves? Is there anybody in the house that know that the Lord is faithful? Hallelujah. And yet he wanted those who were on the ship with him to recognize it too. My brothers and sisters, the world is looking for us to exercise our faith in believing God. And even though they may call you crazy, but we are peculiar people. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. And we got to have faith and we got to believe God that we can be able to be what God calls us to be. Because we need to know like Paul knew. Paul was aware of God's presence. Here's what he said in verse 23. He says, last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I stood and whom I served stood beside me. Oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, when you have faith and when you believe God, when, when you're going through the storm in life and you get discouraged, you need to know like Paul knows that you have a God who I serve. Hallelujah. And stand by you. Paul was assured that then he, had, he wanted to assure the people. He wanted to assure those in the ship with him. You see, Paul was about ready to go over to Rome to stand trial for the preaching of the gospel. But others in the ship was ready to do some business. But the things that they were going to do business with, they began to throw the cargo overboard. Good God Almighty. My brothers and sisters, while others were fearful and hopeless, feeling that they were all left out and those things that they thought was important wasn't important anymore. The storm was raging and Paul says, last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom serve my serve stood beside me. Huh. Hallelujah. Ain't it good to know that you have a God that stands beside you? Doing all, doing all, doing all this trail walk that the storm was going on. Everybody else, doing all this time, all this time, law school. But Paul had rested in the presence, in the security of God. Storms of life, my brothers and sisters, are a reality. And we all must face it. They are unavoidable. And they are unpreventable. But do not have, but we do not have to face them alone. Excuse me. Oh, yes. We don't have to face them alone. The saved, the blood washed believers, we don't have to face them alone. Why? Because we are saved by grace through faith. And it's not our own, it's a gift from God. The saved by grace are promised uh, that the Lord will never leave us uh, nor forsake us. We are never left alone, deacon. We are never abandoned. God is there with us. Why? Because God promised us he would never leave us nor forsake us. While others may forsake you, my others may leave you, God is always there. While all the others in the ship were in a panic mode, Paul rested in the peace. He knew he belonged to God. He was trying to follow the Lord's direction and serve him faithfully. And even though he was on the ship, headed to be tried to courts for the preaching of the gospel, Paul declared that he belonged to the Lord. And the Lord was bigger than any storm they faced. Oh, somebody missed that. They were in a physical storm. But Paul stepped on the ship with a storm that was bigger than the winds that were blowing. He was ready to face being on trial for preaching of the gospel. But he was still secure in the hand of the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, storms of life will come. But when they do, remember to who you belong to. Remember who God is. We got to have faith in God. 
And we got to believe. We will never face a storm in life that the master won't take care of. There will never be a situation in life that he can't come and bring peace into chaos. Paul remained in the storm, but the Lord gave him peace and security. And because he had peace and security in the storm, he was able to save those on the ship that was with him. Sometimes God causes the storm. And then he uses his power to cease the storm. And sometimes he gives peace while the storm is raging. Can I get a witness? I'm almost done. God will take care of you. In verse 24 he says, and, and, and it said to not be afraid. He's talking to Paul now. And said not to be afraid. Paul, you must, here, here it is, you must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who are sailing with you. God had promised Paul that his life would be spared along with all who traveled with him. Not a one would die in the storm. They will all be saved. Paul was the key. Paul was the key for all those in the ship. God's favor was extended to them because of Paul. The unsaved don't enjoy the promises of God. But I am thankful that those who are saved and washed in the blood of Jesus is secured by him. The saved are held uh, within the hands of Christ and in the hands of God. Nothing will face, nothing we face shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing too high, nothing too low. Nothing too high, neither death nor life shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Paul had faith and he believed God. And he said in verse 25, so keep up your courage, men. He's encouraging us. He says, for I have faith in God that it will happen just like he said it told me. My brothers and sisters, we have power. We have power to speak things that aren't as though they are. We have power and authority to defeat the enemy in our lives. But we got to have faith and we got to believe God. Here Paul is revealing the greatest faith in a bunch of, in front of these folks that were panicking and everything that had value to them, they threw it overboard. And here Paul is showing great faith and, and he says that the Lord that I serve, hallelujah, if you believe in man, it will happen just like the Lord told me. Now notice now what he said. He says, so keep up your courage, man. I stopped by here to encourage you, saints of God. Keep up your courage. Keep up your courage. Bear in mind that the context of this passage, they're, they are in a mindset of a storm with hurricane force winds. They have thrown everything overboard, Bill, except themselves. And here, Paul urges them. To keep your courage. They may have thought he had lost his mind. But he was simply resting in the peace of God. Even though this storm was still raging. Paul saw no reason to fear. My brothers and sisters. God did not give us a spirit of fear. But he gave us one of love and power. And of sound mind. I stop by right here to let you know. That we need to have faith, and we need to believe God. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to steal your joy from you. But I stopped by here to let you know, we're not the only ones in storms. Uh, Jesus himself uh, was in a storm. Uh, when he stepped out of glory into time, he stepped right out of, the, out of glory into the ship of, of earth, uh, into storms. Uh, they didn't like Jesus because Jesus exposed what was going on around them. He exposed sin. But Jesus kept on and even though he was going through they forced me accused my Jesus but he kept the faith and he believed God. He, he said God uh, why did you forsake me? Why he, he was on the cross. He said why did you forsake me God? Even when he was praying in the garden he stayed in the ship and he had faith and he believed God. He prayed so hard that blood be 
begin to pop out of his head like sweat. And he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But he kept on. He believed God by faith. He said, but nevertheless, God, but not my will, but thy will will be done. Not only that, when they were beating him, he never said a mumbling word. When they laid him on the cross, they nailed his feet and they nailed his hands. They struck him wide and hung him high. They pierced Jesus in the side. But he kept the faith. He believed God. And while he was on the cross, it got dark around the ninth hour. And he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he kept the course. He kept the faith. He believed God. He kept on. And he hung his head and died. Oh, yes, he did. But he kept on. Even when they laid him in a bar too. Jesus knew that he had victory, not only for himself, but he had it for you and I. So that's where our faith comes from. We got to believe God, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And in him, we have victory. We have victory, and you've got to have faith in him, and you've got to believe God. But Jesus did not lay in that bar stool too long, because early, on Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. And because he got up with all power in his hands, and if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, our life is hidden with Christ in God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that's why it's important for us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lead not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge Him. Even in the terrible times we're living in, He will direct our path. How many believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than we can ask, think of, and imagine? Why? Because of the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad. That I have faith. And I believe God. And it's my faith that keeps me moving. It's my faith that keeps me grounded. Because the Holy Spirit reminds me. When Paul talked about it. In Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God. To present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. Sometimes my mind is not right. Sometimes my body's not right. Sometimes I want to do things while I'm in this raging storm. But I thank God that I have faith and I believe in God. And faith is what we need in the times that we're living in. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But there may be somebody who is on the line today that has lost faith in everything else. You've been carrying your cargo and you've been transporting it with you everywhere you went. And now the storms of life is raging. And you're beginning to throw some things off. You're beginning to get rid of some things. But let me share with you today. When you get rid of those things, you got to replace it with something else. I remember before I got saved, let me give you a personal testimony. I was carrying some baggage in this mean old world, being self-satisfied with the things of this world. But one day I decided that I don't want to carry this baggage anymore. And I took a step and I put myself in a detox center and then a rehab center. And then when I got out, I, I still threw the package away, but there was some residual of what I had with me still trying to haunt me and still trying to pull me and still trying to get me back in that lifestyle. And I, I remember after a year of being in the program called NA and NA that helped me tremendously. It was a stepping stone. I remember I was not satisfied and that baggage was still trying to jump on my back. And I, I remember one Saturday night, I, I said, Lord, I got to go back. I got to go back to where you first found me. And I remember as a young boy that I was down here at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church and I heard the word being taught and I heard the word being preached. Didn't stay long, but it was just enough that held me in the time when I was going through a storm. And I remember coming to the church on Sunday. I remember after R.J. Manning was preaching and, and I came down that aisle and I 
gave my life to Christ, uh, but the storms kept on raging in my life. But I began to anchor myself in his word and I began to believe God because he began to show me. And I began to see that God is real, y'all. And I just want to encourage somebody today. No matter what you're going through in life, my God is able. He's able to deliver you. Even though you might have grown some things, those things got to be replaced with something else. And that is with Jesus. And the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And as always, I want to explain that to you. You may not understand it, but let me just break it down a little bit to my understanding that you've got to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. I know it's hard, but you've got to believe that by faith. You gotta believe that he walked this earth like you and I. He was human, but yet he was divine. You gotta believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross for your sins and my sins and for the sins of the world. You gotta believe that they took our Jesus off the cross, they laid him in that bar tomb. And, and you gotta believe that he didn't stay there long because on the third day morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. And you gotta believe that he's coming back. And when he's coming, when he comes back, you don't want to be left outside. Is there anyone out there today that don't know Jesus? That you had faith in everything else? And everything else has failed you. There was no shelter in the time of the storms in your life. But I serve a God that controls even the wind and the rain. And I invite you today to get to know him. As we open up the doors of church, you can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come as under Christian experience. You can come by letter. But whatever you do, please come. Because time is winding down. No one knows the day or the hour that Jesus is coming back. But I do know that the Bible is true. And I have faith in his word. And his word tells me not even the angels or even himself know when he's coming back. But I believe that he's coming back. And I have enough of belief, enough of faith that God is going to save you as well. If the Spirit has drawn you. Only if the Spirit of God has drawn you. Not because you hear me speak it. I'm just a parrot. But if the Spirit did not move, and if the Spirit did move, that is God speaking to you. Won't you come? Won't you just give your life now? Why don't you surrender all? Surrender all to Him. Surrender to Him. I know there is a way that seems right to man. But the way thereof is death. Seek the Lord while he may be found. You're near to him while he's near. Won't you come? If you have made that step, if you have made that decision, reach out to us on our Facebook page. Look up our phone number and give us a call. And we will get back in touch with you. And we'll do whatever we can to help you have a better understanding what salvation in Jesus is all about. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile down upon you. We're going to ask that Deacon Weaver will pray for all the sick and shut in, for our community, for our state, and our country. Deacon Weaver. Let us pray this Father. We pray this afternoon, Lord, for all those that are sick and shut in, Lord. You know this situation, Lord, and we just want to ask you your Lord's touch, Lord, that you reach out and touch those yeah. that, you know, are suffering anything, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you continue to touch those from St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. We continue to ask you to bless our pastor. And anyone, Lord, that, that we're in touch with, Lord, we just want to just pray for them right now. Any names that are in the box, and we pray for those that have put the names in the box. We pray for those that, that you know, they ask a special prayer for them. So, Father, we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dean Weaver. We have done what God has charged us to do, and there's always room for more. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, 
both now and forevermore. Let us say amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you, and may heaven continue to smile down upon you. I love you with the love of Christ.